Welcome to EPG Parshala. Dear students, today we would be discussing the module uh, on theories and morals of planning and development. Now the learning objectives of this module uh, are as such, we have the introduction to theories and models, then we have the agriculture land use model and we have the concentric zone theory and we have the least cost theory. Now what is a model? A model is basically an explanatory framework. It is a phenomena. It gives explanatory framework of a phenomena. So therefore, and a theory, if we see the definition, I will quote, the theory which uh, J. N. Peter Say has given, I will quote, theory is a critic revision and summation of past knowledge in the form of general propositions and the fusion of diverse views and knowledge in general frameworks of explanation. And the model, I will again quote, is by Klein and Romero in 2007, a model is a system of functions and conditions that yield particular results that is generally used to mean a formal system using some mathematical representation. So therefore, the theories and models in the context of planning de and development attempts to understand the special planning processes of the city and the regional growth and the special determinants of economic development. As we can see in this slide, there are there have been various theories and approach models which have developed over a period of time. There have been the classical theories, which was developed between 1800 to 1950s. There was the neoclassical theory, developed between 1950s to 1970s. There were postmodern theories and models from 70s to 80s. And then neoclassical counter evolution from 80s to 90s. And there was this emerging that is from 1990s onwards. Now, if we look at the classical theories, was basically or mostly location theories focusing on locations of development with no consideration of ration, rationality or consideration to rationality. And the neoclassical on the other hand based itself on modernism and related to special distribution of locations of development to rationality in thought. The postmodern explained the or included the development theories or models based on unscientific and irrational thought processes. And the neoclassical, the counter evolution explained the theories or included the theories and or models on the belief that governing bodies have a key role to facil in facilitating regional development. And the emerging theories were based on new concepts attempting to deviate from the piecemeal approaches. Now when we come to this classical theories or models, we see that there have been theories as you can see here which is listed out that the agriculture land use model in 1826, then we had the concentric zone theory in 1920s, then we had the least cost theory in 1929. We had the central place theory in 1933. We had Schumpeter's model in 1934. We had in 1939 the sector model. In 1945, we had the multiply, multiple nuclei theory. And in 1950s, we had Keynesian regional growth theories. And the neoclassical theories or models, we see that in 1957, we had the cumulative causation theory. In 1966, we had the growth pole theory. In 1966, we had product cycle theory by Vernon. Um, in 19, and 1968, we had stage theory by Thompson. And we see that the next um, category, which is the postmodern, we have the Marxist theory in 1977. In Neoclassical counter evolution theory, we had the public choice theory, which is in 1986. 
the, in the emerging theories we had in 1991 the environmental Kuznets curve and in 1991 the new economic geography. Now coming to these classical theories or models, today we would be discussing in, or looking into detail these classical theories or models. Now the classical theories, the first let us start with the agriculture land use model in a, of 1826. Von Thunen was an economist and agriculturalist. He demonstrated, he lived between from 1783 to 1850 and he demonstrated that the geographic pattern of agriculture land, in fact agriculture land use was regular and predictable. He suggested that accessibility to the market or the town can create a complete system of agriculture land use. Fontunen initially formulated the isolated state model rather initially formulated the isolated state model which was conceptual and later developed it into the contextual agriculture land use model in 1826. It was later extended by the geographer Robert Sinclair in 1967 based on the changing factors that might affect the validity of the von Thunen model in modern times. Now the assumptions which were used in this model were as such, uh, it was assumed that the city is the market for the surplus products from the hinterland and it receives products from no other areas and the hinterland supplies its surpluses to no other market except the city and that there is a homogeneous physical environment including a uniform plain around the city and the hinterland is inhabited by farmers who wish to maximize their profits and who adjust automatically to the market's demands and that the transportation costs are directly proportional to distance and are borne entirely by the farmers who ship all the produce in the fresh state. Now the isolated, you can see in this figure, the isolated state model or the conceptual model, where the distance calculated for fixing the radii of the concentric circles, it shows the distance, how it, these concentric circles shows the distance, can I, can I repeat? This figure shows the isolated or the state model or the conceptual model. You can see there are concentric circles. There is a black dot in the center which is supposed to be the city market. Then it is encompassed or the next circle is number one which is the dairy areas where the dairy products is there, production is there. Then the second the, or the green color is the forests, are the forests which are used for fuel. Number three is the yellow colored band which talks about the grains or which refers to the grains and the live crops, sorry the field crops. Number four, the band of number four which is the red color which speaks about or which uh, relates to the livestock in that area and the last band which is the outer area that is number 5 or the red color refers to the wilderness. Now the calculations are uh, R is equal to Y bracket open P minus C bracket closed minus Y F M where R is the rent per land unit, Y is the yield per unit of land, P is the market price per unit of yield, C is the average production costs per unit of yield, M is the distance from market in kilometers, F is the freight rate per yield. Now the next uh, aspect which I want to wanted to explain is that in 1826 the agriculture land use model was developed from the isolated as I had said earlier from the isolated state model by von Thunen where he contextualized it. The earlier slide spoke about how uh, 
it developed as a conceptual model, but then it was contextualized. So, this contextualization uh, is that this figure shows that contextualization. Von Thunen noticed that most towns were located near a river or a canal and that the crop farming intensity varied. So, he, he formulated, he said that each zone specializes in the production of those agriculture commodities to which it is best suited. And so, therefore, zone 1 which is nearest to the city is best suited or should have fresh milk and vegetables with zone 2 focusing on the production of wood for fuel, zone 3 for crop farming, zone 4 for less intense crop farming, zone 5 for least intense crop farming, zone 6 was one of the livestock farming. And this picture shows that there is this uh, the black color in the center shows the city or the central market and uh, these lines shows the navigable river which is uh, the cities are on the navigable river and these uh, boundaries or these zones various zones are encircling the city. The criticisms regarding the calculations was that the measurement of the number of man days worked in a year, the cost of labor per hectare or the cost of total inputs per hectare it was not uniform in intensive and extensive types of farming. In the current conditions, the, the ch with the change in location of market center, the pattern of land use also changes. And due to improvements in transportation technology, there are changes in agriculture land use and the economy with which it interacts. So, these, these were the criticisms as far as the uh, uh, land use model goes, agriculture land use model, von Thunen's model. Now, but there was an extension as I mentioned earlier, uh, that there was an extension to this agriculture land use model, which Robert Sinclair put forth in 1967, uh, which was that transport costs are not directly proportional to distance and the bulk. Then refrigeration was possible for perishable commodities. Uh, modern transport production techniques could allow for large scale production. Then the mass transportation and possibly to markets that were far away was possible. So, therefore, these were the situational or the ex rather the context which uh, Sinclair uh, used while extending this model and he observed that the urban land today is much more valuable than rural land and where there is direct competition between the urban and the rural land uses, urban uses generally take over and land where urbanization is expected also is more valuable than rural land and such land rises in value and either is purchased from the original owner by developers and speculators or held by the original owner as speculation. Now, Sinclair's if we look at Sinclair's extension to the model in a little more detail, we see that the agriculture land use would become more intense with increasing distance from the city owing largely to the cost of land and the role of speculations on the rural urban fringe. That is what Sinclair said, uh, that was his model. And if you can see in this figure or in this graph, uh, the x axis talks about the distance from the urban center and the y axis shows the agricultural land value and the his model has been explained through this graph. Now, when we further explain Sinclair's model, we see that at a distance from the urban center, rather point A, there is some value for agriculture. 
at this point a very low intensity low in low input agriculture land use is found that is grain crops or pasture intense speculation in land decreases with the distance from the city and therefore as you can see therefore greater capital and labor inputs become more practical with distance since there is an increasing stability to the agricultural future in this case at point x the low input crops may be replaced by land use with more or replaced by more intense crops or cropping pattern which is that is orchard or vineyard as shown in uh, by line 2 now we come when we compare these two agriculture land use models that is the von thunen's model and the sinclair's model you can see these two figures which show that uh, the with the distance which von thunen's model says that with the distance from the market that is with greater distance from the agriculture from the urban center the agriculture value falls but in the sinclair's model uh, you can see uh, a difference which is that the agriculture value increases with the increasing distance from the market and it becomes stabilized afterwards and the agriculture land near the market is displaced for urban uses now we come to the concentric zone theory of the 1920s concentric zone theory was put forth by ernest burgess of 18 from 1886 to 1966 was his lifespan and he was an american born urban sociologist now burgess and his friends in their book the city published in 1925 conceptualize the city as concentric zones and thus the name concentric zone model including multiple zones that experiences evolution and change and he developed this theory in the mid 1920s based on an examination of the historical development of chicago through the 1890s and the assumptions which he took forth or which he based his theory on was that a city grows by expanding outwards from a central area radially in concentric rings of development and he classified the city into five zones as you can see from this figure there was there is a central business district which is number one which is at the center which has a focus for urban activity and the confluence of the city's transportation infrastructure and you can see also a view of uh, this sort of a city then we have zone 2 which is a zone of transition which is predominantly a manufacturing district with some residences the third zone these are all contiguous zones one after the another the third zone was of independent workers homes which has working class population living in older houses which generally lacked amenities then zone 4 was an outer zone which has which was a zone which had good residences which comprised of spacious housing for middle classes people could move out because of transportation and better transportation facilities people could move out and live there and then there was a number 5 which was the commuter zone which was dominated by better quality housing for upper class residents so we can see that as we go away from the central place or from the center the economic class that is the upper class it goes from the um, lower class lower economic class people to the middle classes and to the upper classes so more of upper classes in the residents in the outer zone that is the fifth zone now the criticisms of this theory was that this theory was descriptive and contrasted from other analytical approaches and the model was developed after before the advent of mass commuting options and so therefore people 
lived outside and it was assumed that people lived outside the upper class people and every city and this theory also was criticized because every city is unique and there is no such thing as a typical city and that many working class population now choose to live and work outside the city on the urban fringe a phenomena that was not reflected in the Burgess model. Now we come to the least cost theory of 1929. The least cost theory spoke about, in fact, Alfred Weber was a German theoretician in economics, geography and sociology with a lifespan from, spanning from 1868 to 1958. And he put forth this theory. He was interested in proposing casual, or rather, sorry, causal models in economics and worked on early models of industrial locations. And he proposed this theory in 1929. He tried to explain and predict the locational pattern of the industry at a macro scale. The assumptions, or his assumptions, were that the on which this theory was based was that the location of raw materials is fixed in space in a predetermined and known fashion. And the special distribution of consumption is fixed and there is only one central purchase point for each product producing unit. And that the distribution of labor is fixed as are wages at any specific location. Transportation systems are uniform in every way considering only rail. Now the concept was that of this theory was that the point of optimal transportation is based on the costs of distance to the material index or the ratio of weights of the intermediate products raw mat or the raw materials to the finished product. This was the transportation cost, the concepts relating to transportation cost and the concepts relating to labor cost was that the, there was a labor distortion. The sources of lower cost labor may justify greater transport distances and become the primary determinant in production. The, uh, regarding the agglomeration and the deglomeration economies, we see that agglomeration is the phenomena of spatial clustering or a concentration of firms in a relatively smaller area for more profit and for more shared benefits. Deglomer deglomeration occurs when companies and services leave because of the diseconomies of scale and because of the industries, because of the excessive concentration of industries. Now the theory, this least cost theory said that industrialists chose a least cost location for the development of new industry and forces which, uh, which determine the industrial location or the attribute, determine the attribute of the special location of an industry and these are as I said earlier the costs of transportation, costs of labor and the agglomeration deglomeration tendencies. So therefore, uh, we see that um, the industrial location may be swayed by local accumulation or excessive concentration of industries that is the concept of agglomeration and deglomeration uh, and also would be dependent on industrial location would be the uh, choice of industrial location would be dependent on costs of transportation and costs of labor. So dear students, today we have learned the various theories and models of planning and development. This is the first part, it will continue because today we uh, concentrated on the classical theories and in this we in, in fact started off with the introduction to all the theories we saw uh, the development of theories on a timeline and how from classical to, to um, neoclassical to modern concepts how various theories came up at various points of time and then we focused on uh, we started off with focusing on the classical theories and the classical theories we concentrated on the agricultural land use model, 
that is von Thunen's model and its extension of the von Thunen's model. And then we went into the concentric zone theory and then we went into the least cost theory, which basically all these theories spoke about the locational, about how uses um, change, how markets uh, behave, how uh, industrial location is affected. So, about this is about some aspects of planning and development. Thank you.